Welcome to Michelle's Making. Hope you're ready for coffee, crafts, cookies, and cocktails. Let's get going. Welcome and welcome back to those of you who are returning. I really do appreciate it. Today is oatmeal day. I had oatmeal for breakfast and we're making oatmeal cookies today. Frankenstein Friday, appropriate, mean as we're approaching Halloween, breadstick day and hermit day. So there's some things to keep in mind as you go through your day. I've already enjoyed my coffee. It was pumpkin spice today. It's getting close to some fall weather. Being here in Florida, we don't get much in the way of seasons, but we do get some cooler evenings, some cooler nights. So we're hoping those are approaching soon enough. Let's make it a great one and get going. Oops, we're not making oatmeal cookies today. We're making cherry dump cake. I don't know if you've ever tried a dump cake recipe, but they're typically three or four ingredients and so easy to make. This one requires three ingredients, the cake mix, the can of pie filling, and butter. You start out by melting a little bit of the butter in your pan or greasing your pan, whichever you prefer. And the butter you use does need to be melted, so melt it and set it aside. Spread your filling down in the bottom of the pan. Next, you sprinkle the cake mix across. Make sure you get it spread evenly and catch the corners and the edges. Next, you'll give the butter a little stir. It tends to want to separate when it's sitting, waiting to be used. And then you're gonna pour it across the cake mix. Make sure you get the edges and the corners. Um, after I poured the butter in, I just took a fork and kind of smoothed over a little bit just to get an even coverage of the butter across the top. The full recipe will be in the description box, but you'll bake this in an oven that's been preheated to 350 degrees for about 40 minutes. And there's our delicious cherry dump cake topped with whipped cream. The first craft today is an easy egg corn makeover. I had picked up this egg corn at Goodwill. It was a blue tag on sale for 50% off, so it ended up costing me 50 cents. And as I took the tag off, I saw the tag underneath was a Dollar General tag for $3. So originally this cost $3. taking off the embellishment and the tags, I gave the bottom portion of the acorn a good coating. Actually, it was three coats of the cashew chalk paint. I had actually watered it down a little to get the last that was in my uh, bottle. And it was a little watery, but that could be why it took the three coats. But I did the bottom portion and the sides, front and back, I love it when I find something at a thrift shop or a yard sale that is just a quick and easy little makeover that will fit in perfectly then with my decor. Do you like projects like this? Let me know in the comments. And as usual for me, I use my handy dandy heat gun to speed up the drying process. Next, I used the antique wax paint and did a dry brush technique on the bottom, mostly the bottom and the sides, front and back of the egg corn, just to give a little bit of uh, dimension to it so it didn't look like flat paint. The next step was to wind jute twine around the top portion of the acorn. And I did this by hot gluing it and be careful that hot glue will do a number on you if you touch it too quickly. So use a tool if you have one to hold it down. But I have learned to kind of go lightly at first and then as it cools a little, you can press into it. But I wrapped this around, around and around and around and around and covered the top portion of the acorn.
Next, I added some embellishment to each side of the acorn. The first side, I used a metal maple leaf that had a raffia bow attached to it that I got off of another project. And then I used one of my tags that I, I had picked up at Hobby Lobby. I don't know if you remember from a couple of crafts back. It was a pack with three, thankful, blessed, and grateful. And I used the thankful tag and another raffia bow on the other side. So there you have it, an acorn makeover. The next craft is a tall gnome. Now I told you I've developed this affinity for gnomes and I made this using all things I already had in my stash. This started out with a candlestick. It's a large candlestick I had picked up at, I think I got it at Hobby Lobby a few years back. It was yellow, I painted it white for some other piece of decor in my home, but it broke, I glued it back together, and now I'm gonna use it as my uh, shape of my gnome. I began by wrapping some batting around the candlestick to give it a padded look, and I did this first with one thick layer of the batting and used packing tape, actually, to tape it up. And then after I had done that, I decided to put a second layer around it just to give it a little more fullness. With the second layer of the batting, I went a little bit higher up just to kind of fill it out around the middle at the bottom, just to give it a little more plumpness and also to make sure it was tall enough to come up to the top and wrap over the top. I purposely did not cover the bottom of this so that it would sit straight and evenly on the tabletop. I even gave it a third layer of batting just at the middle bottom portion there to try to give it a little more plumpness. The next thing I did was take a piece of my drop cloth that I've had in my stash and decided to cover it with that. Now I kind of winged this as I went along and glued the bottom. And once I got around the uh, base of the gnome, I stretched and pulled and then glued the top and stretched and pulled that. And then eventually worked my way down the seam, which I left as the back of the gnome. And in retrospect, I now realize I should have made that seam in the front because it was gonna be covered by the beard and then it would have not had any seams showing at all. So if you decide to do something like that and you're going to put a long beard, keep that in mind. You could cover the seam and then it would appear to have no seam at all. While I've been working on this gnome, I came across an idea for another one. So I think next week I'll have a different gnome and maybe do a female twist on it. Tune in and we'll see. was definitely a labor of pulling and tugging and gluing and pulling and tugging some more. I was just trying to stretch it and get some of the wrinkles out, which I didn't get all the wrinkles out, but that didn't really matter. It Most of the wrinkles came out and the rest really don't show.
for the hat, I used a bath mat that I had picked up at Dollar Tree some while back. It was been in my stash. I didn't know what I was going to use it for. But since this gnome was going to be all kind of rustic-y, uh, the brown family of colors, I thought this would be perfect. And I loved the texture of it. I felt like it would give his hat some texture. So I played around with which direction I was going to do it and then measured, put a little snip so I knew where to cut and cut it. And then I cut, folded it over and cut it from the tip down to where the rim of the hat was going to be at an angle. Once that was done, I then hot glued the seam and turned it right side out. I pulled another tassel out of my stash and you can see here I used a crochet hook to kind of pull it through because I wanted the ball portion of the tassel to go into the hat so it was just little flippy uh, yarn at the top. I did secure it with a little bit of hot glue. It didn't take much because it was quite a snug fit. For the nose, I had a wooden knob in my stash that I painted with a flush colored paint. And it had a flat section on the back of it, which was just perfect. I did add some cotton balls to his hat to give it a little bit of form and help it stand up. But I glued the nose onto the body and then glued the hat around the nose. I took a piece of faux fur that I had in my stash that I picked up last year on sale and cut, you can see here, the shape that I was going for. However, I forgot to turn the camera on to film the cutting of the fur and the initial gluing of it. But here I was gluing in the edges of it under this um, rim of the hat. And I added some embellishment of a button and the third tag out of my bag of tags from Hobby Lobby. And there you have our tall gnome who is blessed. Well, now it's time for that adult beverage. I'm going to relax with a blue kinky martini. I'm gonna use up this bottle of blue curacao yet. But vodka, blue curacao, some kinky, which has a great mango passion fruit flavor to it. And then my Jose Cuervo margarita mix. The complete recipe will be in the description box. So put everything in the shaker. And of course, shake, shake, shake until well chilled while your glass is chilling. Strain it into that chilled glass, and the only thing left now is to enjoy a blue kinky martini. 
Well, folks, that's it for another week. Thank you so much for sticking with me. I do appreciate it. Let's take time to stop and smell the coffee, make it a great one, and I'll see you next Friday.